Hello and welcome to a new video. Now you may have seen my previous video where I put the Mac Mini M4 through its paces trying out a variety of 3D software including Blender and Agisoft Metashape and I also went on to test Unreal Engine and put the base spec M4 Apple Silicon through its paces to see how it performed with some of the most common normally PC based software. Today I have a brand new shiny M5 MacBook Pro and I'm going to put it through its paces as well. I'm going to be doing the worst unboxing video ever and then I'm going to skip all the and go straight into testing this computer the way it's supposed to be tested. Now it comes in a lovely box, it looks really nice, it's very shiny, that's about all I can say. I haven't used the previous M4 MacBook Pro but as I know there is very little by way of change. The screen stays the same, the battery life is the same, the chassis is the same and the ports are the same. Now I went with the base spec, the 10 core CPU with the 10 core GPU, which is the only configuration of the M5 at the moment, with 16 gig of RAM and 512 of storage for £1,599. Elsewhere, what I'm really, really annoyed about with this Mac is that it you have to buy the charger separately, and I just think that's unbelievable in this day and age. I'm pretty sure the M4 MacBook Pro came with a charger, so I had to fork out. The 70 watt power adapter is £59, which again is frightfully annoying and I just can't get my head round. And to boost it up 512 of storage is £200. To boost it 2 terabytes of storage is £400. And to boost it up 4 terabytes of storage is £600. So Apple are quite literally charging £200 for 8 gig of RAM. Now as you know from my videos, I am a mid aged man I'm probably not Caucasian I'm not going to dominate myself in front of the camera and sit there and put on a cheesy smile but I do have a tacky tech shelf and I'm going to add some items to it here Let's go test this thing. Now first up, I couldn't resist the GPU benchmark for Blender. And this tests all three benchmarks and the combined score is comparative to other processors at the end of the test. Now the reason why I am not using OBS is A, I have lots of problems with it on a Mac and B, uh, it actually slows down the performance by about 5%, around about that for me. So I'm recording my screen every time. I did do some OBSs for clarity, but mainly it's screen recordings here. So after speeding that up a little bit, I get my benchmark and I will add it up. With all that, I get a score of 1755.5. Let's compare that using these funky new diagrams that I have. The M4 GPU, this is the non-pro, is 1076.95. So according to ChatGPT, a score of 1755.5 versus 1076.95, which is the average for the M4, this one is 1.63 times faster. I'm pretty happy with that. The M3 Pro with 18 cores is the benchmark that's probably the closest to what we are getting at the minute, 1767. So this GPU is roughly the equivalent of an 18 core M3 Pro at the moment. And the M5 generally finds itself closer to the bottom of the table with the M3 Ultra, no surprise, with 80 cores with a score of 7,493. But only two benchmarks to report there. The 60 core coming in at 6,500. What does this, but what does it actually feel like using Blender? Well, I downloaded Blender 5 Beta the first time using it. And I downloaded the classroom scene, which one of the benchmarks is based off. And after a few minutes of just warming up, I can tell you that it feels silky smooth. It feels almost just like using a high-end PC, except without the noise and the heat. And you could literally have this thing on your lap or have it on a train and be working away at Blender. And I just can't believe I'm in cycles and I'm seeing this move this smoothly in a relatively complex scene with lots of geometry and lights. Perhaps we should pay tribute to the engineers and programmers at Blender for optimizing this so well for Apple Silicon because I probably used this close to last year on the M4 and it just feels so much better in a way more complex scene. And now on to our Geekbench tests. Now in the tests I've seen, single and multi-core performance for the M5 lead the tables in Geekbench, but I'm not really interested in single and multi-core CPU benchmarks because it's more for web apps and stuff like that and we're really looking at 3D applications. So I'm only going to test OpenCL and Metal for this test. First, OpenCL and a respectable score of 47,451. 
Behold another funky chart. And for the metal benchmark, I'm getting 73,697. Now for one benchmark that the M5 definitely does exceed in over the M4 MacBook Pro, and that is a disk speed test. From what I'm hearing, I don't have the M4 MacBook Pro to compare it to, but I'm getting an average of between 6,500 and 7,000 from my read-write on this 512 gigabyte hard drive. As I understand it, that's almost twice as fast as the previous generation. But as mentioned previously, 600 pounds for four terabyte versus a Samsung Evo 990 that you could put into another laptop that is upgradable. We're getting roughly the same read write speeds and you could probably pick one of those up for between two, 300 pound nowadays on eBay. So again, Apple, you need to drop the price of your storage. Now, in my previous video, I tested an application called Agisoft Metascan, which is an OpenCL photogrammetry application, one of the few that actually works with the Mac and is written for Apple Silicon. And I tested the M4 Mac Mini versus an RTX 4080 and an M1. Here, we're going to throw the M5 into the mix with the same data set, which is 67, 66 images of this old chair in my old yard. And we are going to see if there has been any improvements in this. Again, we are using the same settings where we will have a high alignment for our aligned photos. And we will use high depth maps with a mesh count of 5 million. I decided to run the RTX 4080 desktop in comparison. You can see them run relative to each other in this time lapse as they align and build the mesh. One of the greatest things about this processor is just how quiet, again, everything is and the low power consumption. My RTX 4080 has a 1000 watt power supply, whereas the M5 fan noise is barely audible and hardly any heat is kicked off while it chugs away to align these images perfectly. I can't help but think with more RAM and more cores what this could be hold for Mac users. When using Gaussian splats, we can generate point clouds and Agisoft can be used for this and in another video I'll go into some detail on how to do this on a Mac and test the performance of the M5 in more detail. So when the Agisoft test came to an end the M5 MacBook Pro scored 470 seconds. I did get another result of 458 when I tried it again. Now in the test we did for the M1 MacBook Air we had a total of 16 minutes and 7 seconds with the M4 Mac Mini coming in at 8 minutes 3 seconds. And so I made another graph here with the Agisoft Metashape times. The M1 coming in at 967 seconds, the M4 at 483, and the M5 with barely a large boost at 470, with the RTX 4080 still in the lead at 185 seconds. So, on to our conclusions. I'm not quite satisfied I've done every test. I have a Gaussian splat and an Unreal test coming imminently, so stay tuned and have a look at that in a coming video. Subscribe, like, hit me up on the Patreon and comment as usual. What do I think of the M5 Mac? In my opinion, it seems to be a stepping stone between a full-blown M5 Pro, which I'm eager to see. The M4 Pro still provides far superior power in all the applications that we've tested at an increased price point. Whilst I'm not normally an Apple user, I do feel some attachment to this device. I could easily see myself using it for some light 3D work without a heavy PC that runs out of battery after an hour and burns a hole in my lap. This definitely has a place for the intermediate and beginner 3D users and I'll be keeping my eye on what Apple has to offer next. See you for the next video.